Hey, how's everybody doing today, man? This is Corey Lee's Boxing, baby. Man, I hope everybody's having a great day. You know, if you're just getting this, have a great day. But yeah, man, um, I want to talk about, you know, pretty much a weekend recap. You know, put it all in one video, man. Ain't no use of making seven videos on six different topics and all that. Seven, seven subjects in one video. Never been done. <laughs> Nah, but look, man, um, so yeah, man, please like and subscribe, but yeah, man, um, I want to talk about the Bivol and the, and the, the Barrera fight, man, wow, Bivol is on the freaking map now, man, I mean, wow, did you see the level of punches that he was throwing to this guy, man, it's like, yo, he did have a slight hematoma on the on his forehead, it looked like, you know, from some of the punches and stuff that him and Barrera were, were exchanging in. But from what i seen, and i only seen highlights, but from what i seen, um, Barrera was getting picked apart, man. Wow. i never seen Barrera look this bad. Ever. Like, wow, I was just so, so like, wow, I was just... Like, wow, man, is this the same Barrera that just fought Andre Ward? Is this the same Barrera that outboxed Joe Smith? Joe Smith beat Bernard Hopkins? Even though he was old, but still, man. You know, knocked out a couple other guys, man. Joe Smith? Man, wow, man. And, you know, he's, damn, man, he just outboxed the hell out of Barrera. Then he knocked him out at the end, man. To be honest, dude, it was a, in my opinion, dude, it was at least a, it was at least a B, a B plus performance. Cause I seen some nicks on his face. I don't know if he scars up real easy, or if it was just like from, you know, headbutts, clashes, or whatever. But I seen a huge, well, it looked like it would have been a huge hematoma on the side of his head. But they stopped the fight, you know. So we would never know, you know. But um, but yeah, man, it was it was an awesome fight, man. From what from the highlights that I seen, man, you know what I'm saying? From the highlights that I have seen, you know. And like I said, man, um, I think Bivol should fight should fight Sergey Kovalev next, in my opinion. It's a, that's what I'm thinking, and that's what it is to me, man. You know, that's how I'm feeling about the situation. Um. Yeah, he needs to step up, you know. Next fight, big, big fight for him. They look like they're pushing him real, real fast. Maybe they might be pushing him too fast for a Kurt Kovalev. But maybe we'll see. You know, maybe we will see. I think that Bivol's po- opponent was better than Sergey Kovalev's opponent. I bet you that one. You know? And that's a shame, man. Sergey Kovalev's been in the game, man. He's... He's, I feel like he's more in his career than Figueroa. He should be fighting better opposition, better opposition. And I mean, you got, you got a uh, Bivol that's you know fighting guys that are better than than Sergey Kovalev's last two opponents, in my opinion. So, hey man, Bivol lost. I mean, um, Bivol, Bivol won. Sergey Kovalev has two losses. Barrera has one loss. Bivol has no losses. Nobody's nobody's broke the Da Vinci Code from Bivol yet, man. Will it happen? Who knows? Who knows, man? Who knows? Who knows, man? But like I said, man, awesome fight. And um, yeah, man, I want to get into it quickly. I made a video about it briefly, but uh, yeah, uh, Omar Figueroa is out. Uh, with a with a with a shoulder injury, um, yeah, man, it kind of sucks actually, man, because uh, you would have thought that everything would have been a little bit better, you know, how everything's been going on and everything. But man, man, it's it's kind of just crazy, you know what I'm saying? The way it, you know this is going down. So Adrian Broner has to find a new has to is gonna have to find a new um a new opponent. You know, he's gonna have to find a new opponent. 
He's going to have to, man, because what it is is if he doesn't find a new opponent, then they got to scratch the date. But it looks like they're going, they're pushing through the, uh, they're pushing through, you know, with the whole situation. So, hey, when we'll see. And uh, like I said, man, we're going to see what's going on, with, you know, the whole situation. But I honestly think that Broner and Figueroa, man, that would have been a hell of a matchup, man. The matchmakers really got it right on that one, man. That's a real 50-50 fight, man. Truly 50-50 fight. I would have said it would have been a 80. I would have. I, no, I would have said it would have been a 70-30 fight if we had the undefeated Broner. But you know, I mean, it was never gonna be an undefeated Broner, man, because the ups and downs of this man's career, man, and the way he, the way he lives his life outside of the ring, man. I don't think he would ever been undefeated, dude. I don't think he would ever finish like Mayweather, dude. That's my personal opinion, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, my personal opinion is that, you know, he would have never felt, um, finished undefeated. And he would have probably never be. He's, he probably is one of, you know, he probably is going to be Hall of Fame material. But I don't, I mean, yeah, Hall of Fame for sure. Four-time weight division, but weight division champion. But, I mean... Just all the bullshit that he says. And, man, like I said, man, Adrian Brown, I think he's a good dude, man, underneath all the bullshit. But you got to scrape through a whole bunch of bullshit to get through the real shit. That's just my opinion, man. So, yeah, man, on Wilder, man, wow, man, crushing, 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 crushing. Come back, come back uh, win, man. Uh, he got hurt very, very badly, was in deep waters. In the seventh round, came back, shook it off, and um, yeah, man, he wound up. He was on Queer Street, man. His legs were doing, you know, doing the dance, man, and he got hit, you know, with Ortiz hit him with a barrage of punches, man, and you know, one it was that thing it was one hook that that connected with uh, it was a slick, man, it was so slick. It was like underneath his guard, like type deal, man, where he uh, slipped it, and it was just like I think they were throwing at the same time. I can't really remember to be honest, but I know it hit his chin crisp, like right where on his beard, and it was just like his legs just did the okie doke right after, man. I was like, whoa, is he hurt? And it was like, or he's hit him again. It was like, yeah, he's definitely hurt, and he fucking almost fell. I don't, I, man, yo. Must be him and God got a plan worked out, man, because he he damn sure, in my opinion, looked like he was going down, dude. But, like I said again, man, true champions come back, man. True champions come back. He took the whole eighth round off, picked him apart in the ninth, and finished him in the tenth. Wow, man, what a devastating finish, man. He hit him with an uppercut from hell, dude. It went from the bottom all the way to the top, dude. It was just like, it just instantly dropped Ortiz as soon as he hit him with the uppercut, dude. Instantly. And I have, we haven't seen a whole lot of uppercuts from Wilder, you know, in his KO Finanzi, you know, Bonanza, his KO Bonanza. But we've seen it this time, his uppercut, he does have a different, he has variables in his game. He's not a one-hit pony, not one-trick pony. Some may say he's very unorthodox and he's very uncalculated. But that was that's what makes it calculated because he's uncalculated, if that makes any sense. I mean, the guy's just going, He's the guy's in beast mode at all times, man. You got to understand this guy. This guy is trying to physically hurt you very badly, very, very badly. I know he said, man, this dude hurt me, man. Once I get my strength back, I'm going to try to knock this dude head off. And that's exactly what he did in the 10th round, dude. If you, if Deontay Wilder had no intentions of letting this go the whole, the whole 12 rounds, in my opinion, that's just my opinion. A lot of guys might say it's a lucky punch, but was it a lucky punch in the fifth when he knocked him down? He knocked him down like fucking three, two, three four times, dude. Like, come on, man. The Joshua haters out there, I understand. Y'all got a good champion, you know, and rightfully so. But 
we haven't seen what he can do with, with Joseph Parker yet. Joseph Parker's a very good opposition, man. You know, I'm not sleeping on him at all, man. I'm not sleeping on Joseph Parker now one now one second, man. Joseph Parker's a hell of a fighter, man. Joseph Parker's a hell of a fighter, man. Joseph Parker's a hell of a fighter, dude. Real shit. But yeah, man, um, and um pretty much what other fights? Oh yeah, Andre Durrell. I already had those. Ustaga winning, man. Jose Ustaga. He's a new, he's a he's a new force. He's a new force in 168 pound division. It's super middleweight. Um, Andre Durrell, as I said on another another podcast, I think he does have some some. Uh, I think he does have some um some life. I think he does have a little bit of boxing left in him. My personal opinion: if he fights a not a heavy heavy puncher like like Groves that has a lot of wear and tear. I think if he fights a true boxer, I think he might be able to outpoint a boxer. But as far as far as a boxer puncher, or as far as a pure puncher, he can get caught, man. And it's just it sucks the way the boxing game is, man. It's, and he got a lot of boxing miles on him, man. And I think his prime had le- has left him for sure. There ain't no doubt in my mind, man. You can't blame it on this. You can't blame it on that. The guy's not in his prime anymore. Jose Gastigu or whatever. I can't pronounce his name. Jose. That's his name. Jose, man, finished his ass off, man. If you would have seen my other other uh, Darrell versus Jose video, man, you would have seen that uh, I, I predicted Jose to win by knockout. You know what I mean? I did it about maybe a week ago. It's in my, it's in my comment section. I mean in my uh, video section. But, uh, you know, it's a couple guys commenting, you know, but, hey, man, it came out true. I thought I thought Jose was had the better. But I thought Jose was beating, was gonna find him the first fight, and I thought and I and he finally fought fought him this fight. And to be honest with you, they got stopped around the same time in both fights. Um, it might have been off around in two, but I'm pretty sure near near the same, maybe seventh and ninth. I'm not sh- exactly sure the stoppage of the first fight, but man, Darrell, yeah, man, like. And to be honest with you, man, if I was his matchmakers, man, I wouldn't have put him in the fight with this, this type of caliber guy. Maybe they thought he's, he still had it. Maybe they thought he was an elite Darrell. But, nah. Nah, man. He he ain't been looking stellar for a couple years now, man. Darrell, Darrell ain't been looking stellar for a couple years now, man. So, like I said, man, you know, much much respect to Darrell. He's had a great career. But if he doesn't fight, if he doesn't fight a pure boxer, I don't, I don't got him fighting him. I don't, I don't think he should fight again. Because if he fights a puncher, a guy that's got some, some serious pop, and some may say everybody at 168 has pop, but I don't got George Groves knocking Durrell out. I'm sorry, I don't, man. I'm sorry, man. I don't. Maybe, maybe y'all call me dumb. Maybe y'all call me. You know what it is, but I don't have him knocking him out. I'm sorry, I don't. Nope. But yeah, man. Um, what other fights went down this weekend, man? Sergey Kovalev. I'm not a fan right now, man. I mean, he cries about. He wants a third Andre Ward fight. Okay, we understand this, man. But damn, dude, like, stop crying about it, man. Like, you, you, you lost twice. He still don't want to face the fact he lost, man. Like. Damn, man, like, what What does a guy have to do, dude, to, to really, you know, get you, to shut you up? You you blamed it on the low blows, you blamed it on this, you blamed it on that. Like, I don't, like, I don't understand the guy, man. First fight was very, very close, could have went either way. I get his point about that, but the second fight, in my opinion, man, is, it, man, you know, it is what it is, man. I mean, shit, you lost. And you didn't look like you wanted to continue. Shit. And it was you didn't get hit. Like, like if you did get hit under the belt line, it wasn't like far, man. I don't personally think you got hit under the belt line. I think you got hit on the belt line. And that's not and that's not illegal. When they say from here below, like your trunks below, from like the middle of your trunks below is is illegal. 
That's what they mean in the fighter meaning. They don't mean your, if they hit your trunks that is illegal. You know what I mean? But you know, Sergey Kovalev, he's a, he's a, you know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a bad bad sportsmanship man. On all on all walks of life, in all in all facets of the game, man. I mean, he's just bad sportsmanship, man. My personal opinion, man, I think he could have did a lot better, man, with the sportsmanship. That's just my opinion, man. You know, hey, what do I know, man? But yeah, man, this is uh, this is Corey Lee boxing, man, and I, I hope everybody, you know, have a great day, man, and please like and subscribe, man. Until next time, peace.